guys, it's Trina, and this is my non-spoiler full series review of The Young Elites Trilogy by Marie Lu. The first book is The Young Elites, the second book is The Rose Society, and the last book is The Midnight Star. I rated this series really highly, I really enjoyed it, so today I just want to let you guys know what this one is about and some of my favorite things about it in hopes that maybe that will let you know if you want to read this one or not, if you like those things, and if you don't like those things maybe you don't want to read it, but hopefully this will help you know if this is a series that you want to start or want to continue or maybe just want to skip altogether. The Young Elites is a YA fantasy and I once heard it described as X-Men set in Renaissance Italy and I feel like that is a great description for it, I definitely don't disagree. The characters in this story do have powers that are pretty reminiscent of the X-Men, and Renaissance Italy was Marie Lu's inspiration for this world. To give you more detail about it, this is a high fantasy series, so it is set in a world unlike our own. There are maps in the front of each of these three books, and it is about a world where an illness has swept through the land, and the people that were unafflicted by it, they are just normal people, they are the ones that are in power, and then the people who were affected by the illness, a lot of them died, but the ones that survived it were left with these scars and these markings and our main character is one of the people who was afflicted by this illness and she has had scarring up the side of her face and onto her head so it actually caused her to lose her eye and it turned her once black hair to silver white. The people that have these markings are very easily recognizable and so because of that people think that they're dirty and they really face a lot of oppression, they aren't fed enough, they aren't paid enough. Some of the people who were marked by the illness were also granted the ability to change the elements around them. Not everyone that was marked by the illness has them, but a select few do, and it becomes apparent pretty early on that Adelina actually has the, some of these powers. She has the ability to cast illusions, so she can make anybody see whatever she wants them to see. And when her powers manifest, this like secret society group finds her and kind of takes her in under their wing. This particular group is looking to restore justice to the kingdom, and they take Adelina in in hopes of training her and having her on their side. She doesn't necessarily want to use her powers for good and a lot of people have called this trilogy a villain origin story and that is another pretty good description of it. Adelina struggles with her inner darkness and the thing that makes her such a compelling character is she knows when what she is doing is wrong and she does kind of struggle with it. Sometimes she can do the right thing. You know that she is capable of doing good as well and I think that's something that's great about all of the characters in this story. Even the heroes are very often deceptive even towards each other. They have their own personal agenda and the villains in this story sometimes are motivated by love and I really just enjoyed how sometimes you didn't know who you wanted to root for. Were you rooting for the good guys or for the bad guys? Did you want Adelina to just slay everybody or did you want her to be taken down? The characters are very complex in terms of just like their internal morality, their integrity, they felt very real. I think the Marie Lu writes wonderful characters and this group of characters that we follow are very diverse as well. They are diverse in race and sexuality. I also I think that the idea of this illness having marked some people who are discriminated against was a really great way to examine oppression and privilege in society and you wonder what's going to happen, like if the tables are flipped are the people who were once oppressed going to rise up and like do the same thing back to their oppressors or are they going to stop that cycle? I really enjoyed the plot of this trilogy. I thought that the writing moved it along really well. I was gripped from almost the beginning. There are at times moments where I feel like the pacing of these books were a little bit slow because you'd spend a lot of time preparing to do something and then it would happen all of a sudden and then you'd go back to preparing to do the next thing and then that would happen all of a sudden. But I was always impressed with how things were unfolding. I unfortunately think that this series doesn't have have as much hype as it deserves. This is a really strong and complex world, strong and complex characters. I really just enjoy the themes that it explores and how each of us can make the decision to do the right thing or do the wrong thing. And unfortunately this one doesn't get as much hype and I think maybe that's because some people think the characters are unlikable or maybe because this one doesn't rely on a ton of romance. There is some romance in here but it's not very heavy and it also doesn't rely on twist after twist after twist. The things that came along that surprised me were things that I felt were very natural and they weren't that surprising because I was like, well, I kind of knew that was going to happen, but I just can't believe how Lou wrote this, you know? So I was always impressed by the series, but I don't think it relies on gimmicks as much as other series do. And the finale was just, it left everything so satisfied for me. I did notice last year that most of the fantasy series that I finished, the last book in the series would leave me very underwhelmed. And when I finished this series, I was just kind of sitting there like, that was fulfilling. Like, that is what I want when I have a series ending. I think that she wraps everything up very well. She takes risks. All three of the books in the series kill characters off. I'm not gonna tell you who, 
but there's constantly that risk of these characters may not survive. And at the end, there are a lot of risks. It doesn't take the easy way out. Everything that happened, you understand why it happened. You understand why the characters were acting that way and exactly what the end result of their actions were going to be. And even though sometimes the series is dark, I do still feel like it leaves you with hope. So I was very fulfilled with the ending to this series. I definitely felt like it was one worth finishing, worth reading all three books of. I was very impressed with book one. It took me a long time to get around to reading book two. It took me like two or three years between the first two books to even continue with the series. But when I picked up book two, I was just really glad that I got back into it. So overall, this is a series that I really enjoyed and I would personally recommend it, especially if you like YA fantasy or you like that combination of the X-Men set in Renaissance Italy. I do think that it is a pretty apt description. I thought the characters were complex, the world was complex, the story was unique, the cast was diverse, the plot was interesting and gripping, and I was very invested in it. So yeah, I liked it and I would recommend it. If you guys have read this one and you didn't like it as much, please let me know why down below because I would like to hear a different perspective on it. Or if you've read it and you loved it, let me know that too and we can gush about it together. Or if you're just thinking about reading it, hopefully you'll let me know if this video was helpful at all. I hope I gave you guys a good overview of the series even though it was a little bit less structured than normal. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the comments. Bye!